Welcome to Quantum Odyssey. This is the first full visual representation of universal quantum computation inside of a video game. In this quick video, we'll be looking over the user interface elements within the game and understand how we can use them. Let's begin with the visual representation of our computation, the computational map, here in the center of the screen. It's composed of the input at the top and the output at the bottom. You see zeros and ones, since a qubit can be either zero or one or both at the same time. The blue ball represents the passing of time within the computation. We can speed it up using the back and forward controls or the left and right keys, as well as pause it by pressing this button or by simply hitting the spacebar key. The blue ball is there so we can see the probabilities of the output. Different changes we'll be making to the computation will result in different outputs, meaning the ball might go somewhere else or it might go in more than one place at the same time. Below the speed controls, we have buttons for adding or removing qubits and gate slots. We'll get into what those are in a minute. So how can we make changes to the computation? How do we get the blue ball to go somewhere else? First, let's open the circuit configuration screen from this button. The shortcut for opening and closing the screen is the tab key. We have two sections. The one above is an inventory of all the logic gates that can be applied to our quantum computation. We go over what these gates are in our learning modules within the game. For the purpose of this tutorial though, I'll refrain from getting into too much detail. To apply a gate, simply drag and drop it on top of a gate slot attributed to a specific qubit below right here. As you can see, if I hover with the selected gate over a gate slot, the highlight that appears in the computational map indicates where this gate will be positioned within our computation. Also note that the specific qubit is also highlighted with red to let you know which qubit will be affected by the added gate. I'll drop an H gate right here on the first qubit for the sake of this example, so you can see what happens. An H gate splits the qubit into two possible outputs. Since quantum bits can be 1 and 0 at the same time until measured, the computational map shows us a 50-50 scenario. The gate we've just applied will either leave the qubit as it was when it entered the computation, or it will flip it upside down, switching that qubit to 1. See how the blue ball is splitting into two smaller ones, each having 50% of the initial size, ending in two possible outputs. The second qubit suffers no modification, since no gate was added to it. Let's go ahead and make this extremely complex, because I want to show you something. I'll add a few more gates and gate slots right here. Now you see that the ball can change colors as well. The in-game learning modules do a great job at explaining why this happens. When your computational map gets too big, you can pan around it using the WASND keys. And there we go, these are the basics of Quantum Odyssey. You're now ready to start the learning modules within the game, where you'll begin to explore quantum computation in a completely visual way. From qubits and superposition to complicated quantum algorithms based on quantum interference and entanglement. Everything will be in the game. See you there.